Welcome back to Met Meta Dialogues and compelling discussions across theater themes and know-how of the theater world. Hope you enjoyed our previous Meta Dialogues. The show must go on strategies for cultural venues and translations for theater. In case you missed it, it is available to watch on Meta Facebook page and YouTube channel. The Mahindra Group has always been committed deeply to the arts. The arts need to be nourished and nurtured as in the art lies truth, conviction, talent and wisdom. Businesses need to help the arts flourish and find innovative ways in doing so, especially at a constantly changing world that we inhabit today. A very warm welcome once again to the concluding Meta Dialogue at the Meta 2021. Theatre resurgence on digital platforms. Anil Makija, Anurupa Roy, Rajat Kapoor and Shreya Stalpade, moderated by Yuki Elias. The challenges of staging shows in closed physical environments with limited audience access have led to the major theatre owners and promotional companies like uh, Andrew uh, Lloyd Webber, National Theatre London, Book My Show and Meta creating online platforms to showcase their best theatrical productions. Is this a viable alternative? Can theatre be adapted for screen? A freewheeling conversation with digital platforms, programmers, theatre producers and practitioners about the challenges and opportunities in a new digital environment. Introducing to you a panelist for today. Anil Makija is a Chief Operating Officer for Live Entertainment and Venues at India's leading entertainment destination, Book My Show, offering not just tickets for movies and beyond, but also experiences across theatricals, concerts, live events and sports. With an experience of both over three decades across technology roles, Anil moved to Book My Show in 2008-13 to lead the operations and service delivery verticals while also overseeing deployment of new on-ground technologies at the firm. Anurupa Roy is a puppeteer, puppet theater director, and puppet designer. She is the founder and managing trustee of the Katkata Puppet Arts Trust Delhi. She has a diploma in puppet theater from the University of Stockholm and has been trained in traditional glove puppetry from the School of Traditional Glove Puppetry in Naples. She has been a guest faculty at the World Arts and Culture at UCL. Recipient of the Ustad Bismillah Khan Yuva Puraskar, a national award for contribution to puppet theatre by the Government of India. She is currently one of the trustees of UNIMA, Puppet Puppeteers Trust India. Rajat Kapoor knew very early on that he wanted to be in theatre and make films. Better known as an actor, Rajat is essentially a filmmaker, theatre director and writer for whom theatre is lifelong passion. He is one of the founder members of the Delhi-based group Chingari, some of the plays he has directed over the 30 years are Death Watch, Who is Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Hamlet the Clown Prince, Nothing Like Lear, What's Done is Done, and I Don't Like It As You Like It. Rajat is also a three-time winner of the National Award for Cinema. Some of his films are Kapoor and Sons, Monsoon Wedding, Dil Chata Hai, Mithya, Beja Fry, among others. Shreya Talpade is an award-winning theatre actor, uh, artist, producer, and director who started out acting in many Marathi soap operas and stage shows across Maharashtra. Is widely known for his performance in critically acclaimed films such as Iqbal, Dor, Om Shanti Om, Golmal Returns, Houseful 2, among many others. Shreyas has been committed to theatre for over 15 years and has now <laughs> the startup ecosystem as an entrepreneur with the launch of his OTT platform Nine Rasa, exclusively designed for theatre and performing arts. Yuki is an actor, teacher, corporate trainer, movement director, and filmmaker. She started theatre at Lecoq School, Paris, and Les Paul, London. She is now co-convener of the drama school Mumbai. She is founder of the innovative production company Dursi Brothers, which has produced the successful shows Charge and Yatsuguru. Her debut film Love You to Death as co-writer and actress won an Audience Choice Award at the Encourage International Film Festival and the Royal Reed Award at the Canada International Film Festival in 2012. Yuki's one woman solo performance, Elephant in the Room, won three awards at Meta 2017. This conversation will be followed by a Q&A. Please feel free to send in your questions. Do follow our social media pages and stay tuned to our website www.metawards.com for updates about our upcoming programming. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you Theatre Resurgence on Digital Platforms. Anil Makija, Anurupa Roy, Rajat Kapoor and Shreya Stalpade, moderated by Yuki Elias. Yuki, over to you. Thank you, Suraj, for those wonderful introductions. Welcome, everybody. And in these very heartbreaking and challenging times, may you find some solace some shelter with us, your theater community. Today, we're discussing how we are evolving our creative existence in digital times. And the last year, we've seen tremendous experimentation, exploration, creating work for the digital medium, even collaborating 
on these digital mediums? How do we rehearse, brainstorm, produce and execute work and find our audiences in this new world? And in the last year, uh, a lot of people took to it like fish to water. Some of us were more cynical like myself. We said, you know, maybe this year I'll just sit it out. I'll start making work next year when this is all over and it's year two and here we are. So today we are rethinking um, how we are going to uh, embrace these new spaces. Uh, we've seen a lot of Zoom shows. Some of us chuckle about it on the side. We call it Zwama, like Zoom drama. We've seen a lot of screenings of recordings of archival work, documentation. There's been tremendous panel discussions. And of course, we uh, uh, a big toast to education, theater education that has taken up uh, online. And so um, not just audiences to watch the shows, but uh, people continuously being able to scale up, learn and have a first time experience with what theater making can be as well. So today we're gonna to open the discussion with, I'm going to choose which of our four panelists uh, do I begin with? I'm gonna start with Shreyas. Shreyas, um, you know, a lot of theater people, whether we are creators, producers, all of us, you know, I think somewhere, um, dream of having our own theater space, right? We all dream, can't we have our own theater, uh, Prithvi or NCPA, then we can curate our own shows in there. We don't have to beg for dates. Um, we put our, uh, our, our fantasy festivals together. Um, and yet that's what you did at the start of the pandemic last year. You created a digital theater venue by creating an app, uh, which uh, showcases a lot of people's work. You have plays. Um, this app is called Nine Rasa. It's got plays. It's got even behind the scenes. I watched a bit of that. That was wonderful. I watched the one with Manish Chaudhary and uh, Rasika Agashe. There's a uh, um, stand up. There's a lot of material there. Um, and I wanted to ask, and I, I guess uh, owning a digital venue is uh, cheaper than buying land and setting up a theater. So this is something to think about for all of us <laughs> who've been wanting to have a theater space. So Shreyas, for you, I want to ask you, uh, now that it's been running for almost a year, um, I want to ask you, what has been for you um, the selection process? What do you think makes for uh, the leap? Which kinds of shows are successfully uh, translating online on screen for you and therefore what is your selection process for that and uh, and then how are you recreating them or are you using archival material uh, what is that material that is going out wow that's a very long question yuki uh, thank you so much first of all uh, thanks to meta for having us over and thanks for this uh, discussion um uh, to just let you know about what Nine Rasa is all about, Nine Rasa is uh, pretty much the world's first ever OTT platform dedicated to theater and performing arts. We launched the platform this year on the 9th of uh, April. We probably about 20 days old uh, right now. Uh, but Nine Rasa has plays, one acts, uh, skits, stand up stories, poetry, song, music, dance, everything that can happen on stage will be on uh, Nine Rasa. Right now, we have content which is approximately uh, 100 hours of content, uh, which is exclusively shot for Nine Rasa, completely original content in multiple Indian languages. And we are going to be introducing more Indian languages going forward. Uh, the content will be showcased on Nine Rasa phase wise, not all 100 hours together. Um, but like you very rightly mentioned, yes, I mean, um, having a digital venue is a lot more cheaper than the physical one. And the, uh, the idea behind Nine Rasa, there were two things. Uh, the intention with which Nine Rasa was conceptualized and started was, uh, we worked for a year though. We started exactly around same time last year when we were in uh, lockdown and we didn't know what to do. So a lot of uh, friends from theater kept calling as to, you know, what do you think is the future of theater now? And that's when I felt when everything is going online, um, like your education, fitness, beauty, cooking, everything. Why can't theater go online? I felt it is high time that, you know, uh, theater needs to be seen by more people across the globe. And when th there are a lot of people who miss theater, uh, who want to see theater, but unfortunately they're not able to, uh, with uh, people getting busier by the day and the number of shows going down, uh, the audience dwindling in uh, theaters and auditoriums. So I said, we need to be somewhere uh, give that kind of due credit to the actors who put in so much of effort, uh, to the directors, to the writers who, who take so much of effort to put out one production, you know, I mean, they need to be seen, their work needs to be seen. And that was the idea behind uh, Nine Rasa. And I'm glad the way it has been 
received by um, the audience, critics, you know, theater legends, industry people has been phenomenal and very, very positive, much more than what we uh, expected, uh, actually. So um, we are glad that we are here and it's, it's, uh, it's about time, right? I mean, we have technology at our disposal, might as well make the most of it. That is the idea behind uh, going online with theater. Absolutely. Thanks, Shreyas. I wanted to also ask you, Shreyas, how do you select which ones can make that leap? Which, which work on screen and perhaps not, um, not um, you know, which are the plays so, that don't translate and which so translate? At, at Nine Rasa, there is a, we, we put across a team and I didn't want it to be a very uh, solo mom shop kind of venture where, okay, Shreyas decides. Shreyas doesn't decide. Shreyas has got no clue. Okay, so there's a team which reads scripts and they decide. And uh, when, we, when we talk about theatre, there are so many forms of theatre, right? I mean, there is commercial, there is art, there mm -hmm. is experimental, there is solo performances. There are so many things. So we have tried to put all of them together. So at least one each is what we have right now, whether it is a solo performance or experimental theatre, new guys, senior guys, legends, new writers, mm, legendary writers, directors. So that is what we've tried to create together and present to people. Uh, like I said, we're just maybe 20 days old right now. Uh, okay. So people have just started watching the content that we have. Uh, the more content that we'll start putting out, the more reactions we'll get. And we'll know probably by the end of six months where we stand and what exactly it is that is working for people when they right. say, okay, theater mm. is there online and they can watch it. So right now there'll be more content, a piece each of different sorts of and different forms of theater. Great. Thank you, Shreyas. And we look forward to seeing what that data is about what's working uh, for people soon enough in a few months' time. Yeah. Anurupa, you're up next. <laughs> so I'm going to unmute you. Yes, Anurupa, um, you know, your work is very different from a lot of the theatre work, which is realism, right? And realism translates uh, quite often and already translates uh, as a first option, uh, whether they're cine plays, um, as screenings, etc. Um, your work is puppetry highly stylized with your show Ma Bharat for an audience that perhaps today may not have seen your show. Um, there are very large size puppets, the size of horses and mythical characters. Um, and you occupy a vast amount of space on stage, lights, music, a big ensemble. Um, in contrast, I saw a piece of your work, which was um, at the start of lockdown, which was the girl in the pink frock, uh, which is a beautiful uh, short film uh, again, using puppetry, and for those who haven't seen it, uh, on you know the the arduous journey that people had to take to go from the cities to their villages. What for you is changing in the nature of your work as you are embracing more mediums now with your work? I think essentially um, it's going back to understanding what the stage space um, and puppet theater is is the theater of dead material. So. Uh, which has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantage being that um, you don't have to reckon with a, a body which is the human body, which could be four feet, three feet, maybe even seven feet tall, but a puppet body could be three inches. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the things that adapts very easily to this kind of a screen. So uh, one of the first things that came off the top of our head was to screen uh, existing work, recordings of existing work. And somehow that was very dissatisfying because uh, the, the platform is completely different. The minute you go digital, it's not the same as uh, live puppet theater. There's a certain value in the live puppet theater, whether traditional or contemporary, the kind of work we do. But the minute you're creating for this space, it changes completely. So um, one of the materials which really responded, A, it's a 2D space. So if I have a 3D puppet, it still turns 2D. So to respond to a 2D rectangular space was to see, can you break the space down? You know, if I am talking and I suddenly decide to do um, Alice in Wonderland and introduce a little tea table like this, does this break the space down? Does, do I become a giant versus something really small? And this is nothing. This is drawn out of paper. So um, it was very interesting to try and see what, what things like paper, little material, miniatures would do to a space like this. And that's how Girl in the Pink Frock was born. It's all hand-drawn. Then the question is, are you then doing animation? Because you are recording it and playing it back. 
what is the difference between then live work and archived work? Mm. Uh, is a 30 second gap if you're doing live feed, isn't it still archived? So we did a live performance called Tila Purka Rakshas, which was us playing live to this screen with our phone cameras going through little sets. So there were miniature houses and a tiny city of uh, 10 feet by 10 feet, which came up in my colleagues. Um, a dining room and uh, the king's house was in my bedroom and we were taking our phone cameras through it and phone cameras are amazing because they're such high quality but the question again was uh, is it still live theater or is it something you know it's live feed so what is that space is it live when you make mistakes or is it live when you can something and there is no chance to uh, uh, redo something in live space. So I think these are the questions we are asking ourselves. I think all live performers are asking it. In puppet theatre, my solution is to work more with shadows and 2D cutouts uh, increasingly. And very interestingly, the camera makes 2D look, three, look 3D. So that's the other very interesting discovery. So yes, uh, we're still a year later discovering many exciting things and possibilities of this space. Wow. Thank you. I think I'm going to stay a bit with this existential question, which is, what are we? Who are we? Is this theater? Is this film? Mek on who? Mek yao? I'm going to ask Rajat, since you have always been in so many of the worlds, which is as an actor and director and a producer, film and stage, uh, what for you become, you know, uh, with this new idea of, okay, now digital theater, what for you, are there defining lines for you? You say, you know, this is more theater, this is more film, or do you think it's all one big blur and it doesn't matter? What's your feeling on it? You know, to answer your first question, who are we? Now we know, we are puppets. <laughs> and uh, and Anurupa is controlling us all. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, see? Uh, but it's very good to hear, Anurupa, what you said and, and how you are... Uh, able to innovate in, uh, in these new ways. Uh, I don't know if, if, if what you do lends itself more to this kind of innovation and playing around, or, or it's just you uh, uh, and your mind leads you that way. Uh, it, it's very interesting what you what you've just said and what you have been doing for the last one year. Uh, and the line between animation and, and uh, your puppet theater is also, I mean, it did gives us many ideas to think about, you know. But with live, with real actors uh, performing on stage, for me, it's uh, it's really a complete no-no, yeah. Uh, also because, like you said, Yuki, I've been uh, doing films and theatre uh, simultaneously. The lines are very hard for me, hard defined uh, of what is theatre and what is cinema. And very often what is cinema, uh, it just completely excludes what is theatrical and, and, and the other way around, you know. So when one uh, does something on stage, it, you try it to be as theatrical as possible. And when you're trying to do cinema, you try to be as cinematic as possible and, and shun the uh, other way, you know. Uh, and then whatever I've seen, what little I've seen of uh, theater, which has been shot, it's so bad and it's so bad, not in the sense of uh, it is technical achievement, but as an idea itself, that it, for me, it just dies. It, it, uh, the moment you record it on a camera, it, it's, it's dead. There's, there's nothing in it. It's not, uh, not film for sure. It's not cinema for sure. And it's not catered anymore. I, I don't know what it is. It it goes into a, a another a dimension, parallel universe, where it becomes it mutates. You know, uh, and you said something like variant. It, yeah, yeah, it becomes a variant, and yeah, and you don't know what to do with it because it's unable to. For me, uh, hello, are we there? Yes, we can hear you well. Okay, I lost you guys. Uh, for me to... Hey, I'm, I'm lost. Oh, we hear you totally fine, Rajat. If you can see us, I mean hear us, we I hear, can you. hear you. I can and hear you. And you can continue because we can hear you well. Okay. 
Uh, Rajat lost is a state of being, but yeah, we can hear and see you. So go for it. <laughs> I, I told you, I told you, we are puppets. I'm sure Anurupa is doing something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for me, it's a blackout. Okay. Rajat, why don't you give you a, a moment there to sort uh, your technical side out and maybe from our side at Meta, we can just quickly chat with Rajat on what's happening for him technically. I'm gonna move the question again, Anil, as you can see, there's a bunch of artists who uh, half are having an existential crisis, half are working it through. The other half has made the app and is and, and is uh, en route to embracing it and seeing what the results are. Anil, you're, you're the man to tell us, you know, what has changed for you? You've been seeing that there are a lot of consumed shows that are coming up where these ticketed events uh, of digital work uh, in this last year. Are you noticing something that is shifting in audiences' perceptions about theater from the time that they were, you know, buying tickets off Book My Show and going to the physical venue and watching shows now online? What's your story? What, how do you see the story? So let me start by congratulating Shreyas for joining the bandwagon, the online bandwagon. <laughs> as they say, the more the merrier. We are happy as many people join us. But okay, so when this pandemic hit, uh, we were in a big dilemma because we constantly kept shouting from the rooftops that we are dealing with out of home entertainment, you know, and suddenly everything stopped for us and there was no out of home entertainment. Now, how can a company for 18 years who's been shouting from the rooftops about out of home entertainment is suddenly changing their whole mindset or has to change? That was a big shift for us to move to in home entertainment. Okay. So, one is we had to change our, our communication. But the communication was clearly that this is a temporary phase. This is transitory. And we want you to be safe. We want you to stay home. So we want to live with that dimension and say that we want you to be there. And what happened was that we had to engage with our customer. Because if I lost out on that customer for one year or 12 or 13 months, I would have lost out on a lot. So first day of lockdown, 24th, 25th, we launched our streaming platform. We were the first platform that was across all entertainment. And uh, just to answer Rajat's question, I agree with you to a great extent, Rajat, that uh, there is some kind of theater, there is some kind of uh, shows that will work online on the digital platform. And there are some that will just not work. And I'm not speaking from my heart here, I'm speaking from numbers, okay? Because we did about 550 unique shows we, we must have done about 1400 shows across the pandemic. Uh, and uh, then we did 550, which were unique shows. I mean, we started as basic as getting Indian notion to sit in his home and play with his dog and, you know, sing a few songs, talk to his audience, because we were not even technically uh, up there, you know, to do stuff which looked good. Today, we are much better off. So I'm saying like workshops, like uh, talk shows, like poetry reading, like storytelling, which, which doesn't need that three-dimensional look and feel, which doesn't need for you to emote too much, you know. Now, like, for example, Anurupa was showing us this beautiful little, uh, uh, you know, a, a craft piece, which she's trying to create that 3D effect on a digital platform. So my point is that we will have to differentiate between what can work on digital and what cannot work. And again, I'm saying that the conversion, we had, let's say, one lakh people coming and actually looking at that particular play that was on our website. And the conversion was very, very low. One example I'll give you, there was a production team guy in my office who was dying to see Hamilton. And whenever he went abroad, it would cost him $200, $300. It's screwed. I can't afford this. I'm not going to buy the ticket. Then when this lockdown happened, Hamilton was available online. And he's saying, I was so excited for some 500 bucks. He could watch Hamilton. He's saying, I could watch it for exactly 20 minutes. He's saying the technicals were great. The creatives were great. The, the, the sound, the light, everything was nice. But I didn't feel like I was sitting in a theater and it didn't hold my interest for more than maybe 20 minutes. But having said that, there's a lot of stuff that can happen online, that can happen digitally. And we have to have to have to think out of the box. Today, let me tell you one thing. Um, uh, cinema, part of it moved to OTT. But it's, it's done differently on the OTT channels versus what happens on cinema. And I can tell you that for three months, we went live with a lot of comedy. We went live with a lot of uh, plays during December to February or December to nearly March before the next lockdown came in, I think in April or May. Uh, and the online demand dropped. Okay. So we, from our research, we find that 
let's say if you want to uh, screen regional theater with say subtitles you know which some people who can't watch it or you go to the tier 2 tier 3 cities let's say if you are doing a vagina monologues which is happening at ncpa but you want to actually show it to somebody in jaipur udaipur you promote it in those tier 2 tier 3 cities take it to those cities and that's when it will work so for sure it will complement the business and it will have to survive it will survive and it will happen but it will happen differently we'll have to like mcdonald's created a indian burger when they wanted to sell they made it masaledar so i'm saying the masala has to be different the the whole approach has to change and that will happen it's on its way there and that's my take on this thank you anil and to also add for people who don't you know when this whole corporate world of uh the way people work getting to the theater even in cities uh you know takes 2 hours for people to get through the traffic to reach a show uh we had a screening thanks to meta of our show and i was you know definitely nervous because like a recording of a live show first of all you know you're freaking out how it does it sound how does it look but there were so many people who watched who would otherwise never get to the theater international audiences um and that was very surprising and actually very very heartwarming also it was a great recording by meta and so you know um when it's done well um it's actually it's working for a lot of the audience i'm going to come back to anurupa i want to ask you and i want to move the you know the theme uh, a bit to collaborating uh, what has collaboration been like you know we uh, we used to really collaborate with people in a room um close uh, and uh, you know we see people uh, it's changed over this year and it's going to probably be like this for one more year so one is the pandemic collaborations but also what the digital um uh, mediums have allowed you in terms of a different kind of collaboration if you can share about that that's um that's become a really exciting space what i really miss is actually being in a rehearsal room with the team and i've always worked in a team i don't know what it's like to work alone until very recently i discovered what it's like uh to work alone and it's lonely but uh i think one of the Uh, the key things that happened is a there's a community of puppeteers out there um and we have a union of puppeteers uh i don't know if dance i think dancers and theater walas also have similar unions and this is an international union it's in 119 countries and it's called unima and india has a national chapter and it's existed since 1986 and it has traditional puppeteers contemporary puppeteers and never until today never until recently uh did we have even a 50% attendance of all members you know and members are in uh in uh, bardhaman in tripura in uh, varangal in i mean they're everywhere everywhere across the country this is the first time we had 98% attendance of people wow. from all walks of life puppeteers from school teachers to really traditional leather shadow puppeteers the works and they were all present because of zoom uh and on their phones you know so almost everybody had a smartphone those who didn't borrowed one from the neighbor and it was incredible to be connected in this way and i think the two things that have happened is a the accessibility that is possible on a phone for example b the need now for human beings to connect with each other because the pandemic has pushed us into our homes and people want this opportunity to connect so that's really i mean a unique thing that happened one of the shows we did digitally was a co-production with a german company we were supposed to meet together work together create something together which would have been lovely but we they couldn't travel we couldn't travel so we decided to go ahead in any case <laughs> and it was quite interesting to create something and have the german director watch what we had created and give feedback and then and we were doing it in hindi and then for them to create something and to show it to us and for us to give feedback and it was two parallel performances one for 3 to 5 year olds and we were creating for 6 plus so i mean the fact that you didn't need to travel which would have been great though but you <laughs> didn't really need to travel and that's always been one of the things with collaborations it's you know the air ticket the visa the permissions yeah um and to the extent that this year for a year i taught in a school in pulwama i've been trying to teach there for a long long time and uh, you know the situation in kashmir is such that it's not possible to travel at any time and go off and work and we uh, worked there while they had 2g and we had 4g and it started in july of last year and we just finished uh, fortunately we were there for 
two months in January, February. Uh, so that physical interaction was incredible. But to have the possibility to do this, to go to areas which are inaccessible for whatever reason, and to do it digitally, I mean, that's opened up a whole world of possibilities I didn't know existed. Um, and that's fascinating. I mean, yes, it's not the same as the physical aspect. Absolutely not. But it is the beginning of something which wasn't otherwise at all possible, or we weren't really thinking along those lines. And as, you, as even Anil said, it really complements the work that we can do already with the stage. It's, it's uh, complementing us. Uh, Anil, yes, jump in. No, so, you know, I wanted to share one very interesting example with you all, uh, which is uh, the Rambo Circus. So we took the Rambo Circus digital during the pandemic, and um, you'll have to wear your seat belts or hold on to your seats. But Rambo Circus sold 40,000 plus tickets, okay, across, I think, some uh, 25, 30 shows. But the difference there was that uh, one was there was this nostalgia, I think, where families wanted to show their children what their kids had seen and the kids now of today had not seen it sitting in their living rooms, etc. Two was we added a ticket category, which was meet and greet. So if you paid that extra 100 rupees, you could actually chat with the joker. You could ch chat with the trapeze artist. And um, in fact, we are upgrading the circus and we're going to bring it into the physical world. Okay, with on in an upgraded format, but I'm just saying that it was a different thing done with nostalgia, and we were trying to save the circus. And the whole campaign was let's save the circus, let's help them. Poor guys didn't have a square meal to eat, they they couldn't, you know, survive. I mean, they were in that state of so we said, let's bring them out of that misery of theirs. So we did this, and it just was unbelievable. You know, I mean, it was not something that even we anticipated, but it was just one of those. Uh, things which worked well. So I'm saying if you think out of the box and there are ways to make it work. Sorry, but everything will not work. Some things. Yes. When you said this happened over 20 shows, was it the same show that uh, was uh, we did? Yeah, yeah, it was the same show. The same show. You book tickets for different slots. Like right. in the physical world, you book a two o'clock show, you book a three o'clock show. You book right. a Saturday evening show and that's how it went. And we recorded it with proper five cameras set up and everything. Each show that happened, the, the morning, the afternoon, and evening. No, 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 no. It was recorded and then, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, got yeah. it, got it. And then the meet and greet was live. Okay, fantastic. Shreyas, um, how does a, a, a theater group uh, perhaps uh, reach out to you if they're interested in having their work on your platform? Um, what is that collaboration that uh, you offer with them? And, and if you can share what, what the economics look like. I saw the tickets uh, were quite, you know, there was, I think it was 59 rupees to watch a play. Um, and maybe it was about 500 and something rupees for an annual subscription, yeah. or, or, yeah. which has got a hundred uh, shows out there. So it's pretty fantastic. Uh, tell us about what the collaboration looks like for a theater group that can so do They you. can get in touch with us through our uh, social media handles, whether it is Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Or they can, you know, just write to us at uh, place for all at ninerasa.com. That is P L A C for all at ninerasa.com. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's as simple as that. They just have to send us their scripts, their content. And if it is good enough, then obviously they've got a place uh, on Nine Rasa. And yes, it's a subscription model right now 59 uh, per month and 599 a year. And you get to see whole lot of uh, different performing arts and theater uh, for that kind of money. In fact, the first month is absolutely free. What we are also doing, uh, Yuki, is uh, we are taking rights for the recorded content. Okay. Um, at the same time, we, you know, if we are setting up a particular production, because all these this is original stuff that we are doing. So if you're setting it up, you know, we tell the producer that you give us rights for the recorded content. We'll put it, put it up on our platform. Having said that, you have entire freedom to do offline shows on ground wherever, whenever you want, and you earn some more money out of it. In addition to that, we are also doing some private contract shows wherein, you know, in case they're not able to do ground shows, then these contract shows, you know, maybe a group of 50, 100, 200, whoever wants to see that play separately, apart from the fact that it is there on the platform, they can book that show, they can, you know, see that show as a group together. Uh, they, whatever money they pay goes uh, again to the team, not only the team, but there's a separate fund that we've created for theater uh, community. So it goes in that fund. So whoever at some point in situations like these, if they need any funds, then we already have some fund ready where we, we can give it to them and help them out. So there are three avenues where they can, uh, where actors and technicians can earn money 
uh, out of one production right so i think uh, instead of my point is um, everybody loves theater there's nothing that can replicate the magic of a live performance nothing in this world okay i mean, i've done theater for so many years and i know that i believe in that having said that i think digital and online is the future rather than getting frustrated of the fact that forget there's no money okay that is a known fact that theater there is no money but frustrated with the fact that we've put in so much of effort and there's no one to see it is a bigger frustration for me and i feel if you have the opportunity if you have the technology then you should use it to the fullest and make sure that your performance reaches out to all those people maybe someone in nandurbar chinspokli wherever you know how will he have access to a beautiful performance of yours if you're doing it somewhere in paris i am not able to see that you know but digitally i can and then i should is what i feel i really feel uh, sorry to interrupt but i really no, no, feel that then there has to be some new way of uh, uh, making this thing you and know, i was going to ask you that rajat which is i was going to take it there to you and i'll say if you if there is a new way and if we have to skill up for it and i'm saying also because rajat i wanted to think about uh, everyone in our groups not just the director and the actors but think about our designers our lighting directors our sound operators right. uh, and we no, are there, really there. i'm really sorry you yeah, there, there no. will be there definitely will be a new way and we will keep exploring yes. and we'll keep coming up with new ideas right we sure but that doesn't mean that we'll just keep waiting for that idea to pop up and then we'll do it yeah. we have to start somewhere you know take one step at a time and then yes eventually we'll Uh, reason i'm sorry rajat sir but my my whole base for my argument here is that had we not covered cricket matches with camera and brought to our tv screens do you think cricket in india would have achieved this religion kind of status today where you go to a stadium today and watch the cricket match on the big monitor or big screen over there because you've missed out on certain players taking that catch that wonderful catch or hitting that six you know so you end up watching it on that big screen so Correct. my point is why should we keep theater limited to only one auditorium and not get it out there for everyone to see it i know i, I know what you're saying and, and for cricket it works uh, magically uh, for any sport for any live event in then uh, that kind of a way it works magically but for theater i'm not sure if it, because it transforms the thing it does not remain the same that is Oh, sorry you no i i get what you're saying rajesh i'm just going to put you in the spot for a little longer and i'm going to ask you another question which is i'm just trying for you to rethink something or not rethink just explore you've got amazing actors in your shows right i mean all your i, I call rajesh the king of clown shows um he's got you know actors like pooja sarup uh, and i just feel like man if if bigger audiences got to see pooja even online just for a bit they are going to hunt every live show down now right. what can we do to make sure that actors like pooja sarup in those kind of crazy roles right uh get to be seen more in this way and then what would you do supposing i just said look like, look rajat this clown show or something you are going to make for online i am forcing you i'm putting you in that scenario okay where you can't say no 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 mujhe nahi karna hai no supposing i force you to do it what do you think it will take what would you demand and i say okay take 5 years to do it what would it demand what would you want in order to create a fabulous show out of that material which okay, is a hybrid now, version you tell me what it. that is so then okay. like shreyas is saying we'll talk about how do we get there we can work towards it right but that will have to be i'm saying that can't be uh, something which is already existing like uh, mr makija gave the example of hamilton uh it it just loses what it has and it becomes it dies i think so if what you you're proposing yuki uh, then one would work like that one would see how uh, this new art form if possible for example what anurupa is doing with her cutouts and stuff and then taking the phone camera through uh, uh, sets so to speak you know yeah. you know one will have to come up with something and it'll take innovation it'll take rehearsals it'll take thinking it can't be transposing one to the other you know that, that's what i'm saying so we did the uh, yeah. sea wall with jim and i think that worked out quite well for us uh, we did sea wall with jim just one person there and you know it didn't require too much of sets it didn't require it required just one person let's say emoting on stage and that can be captured so there is there are definitely ways there will we will find ways and we'll have to find ways okay i i just i just had an idea what about uh, a play which is in the form of the zoom call 
where everybody fights kaane kaane jaake the ships break and then somebody takes a gun and shoot himself wow Rajat, it, it's done it's been done it's been done <laughs> oh shit <laughs> so the okay. question becomes this is how do we not reduce down why we do not have to reduce down i think to like say okay it has to fit zoom so why don't we just do, we, we don't want to reduce down to saying bas ek hi actor ko le lo because anyway we do that right. when, when we want to make a show that tours abroad we say one solo solo show <laughs> so <laughs> that would happen so we don't want to be reductive we want to be um, we want to be expansive we want to right. be able to leverage the technology and be innovative and rather than starting with the presumption that we have to reduce let's think who would we need to collaborate with if we want to really leverage the digital space technology uh this changing space who would need to now be uh people we bring in to collaboration to really be innovative since we don't have the solutions all of it so ourselves i think i think for me the problem is if i have a digital space uh where it will be telecast or or shown uh and then i'm given a material so then why am i not making a film <laughs> you know mm-hmm. first of all uh if i have that 5 crore 6 crore then i will i should make a film with that whatever that idea is or the the start is story is uh so if i'm not making a film and i'm trying to do something theatrical and then shooting it i'm i'm still not able to understand uh what is that hybrid thing for example we were told uh, many times to shoot hamlet uh you know but uh, i die with the idea or then we really need to uh, get 15 days of shoot and mm-hmm. make if not then the recording any more but then try and shoot it as if it was uh, a thing you know yeah. which is unfolding and then device shots and i don't know i don't even know yeah. uh, if it's doable uh, but given lots of money one could try that <laughs> um anurupa you tell us a little bit about your thoughts going forward like this does the um can we be expansive in our thinking for online are you afraid of it or are you looking at it as something uh, that can be expansive well i'm 50% afraid of it and i really hear rajat because not every show can translate to yeah. uh, the digital platform and to record a show and um you know show it there are aspects of it like a very vast audience then and you've uh, you sort of then it's on a, it's the show's on a time machine anyone can watch it at that given moment from anywhere on this planet which are exciting possibilities but did i really create that work to be viewed like this becomes a very big question if the if the new reality is that we are going to create for this digital space then we have to really reprogram ourselves quite a bit uh so what does zoom do for us i mean at this moment all six of us are sitting in different parts of the country and we are talking to each other in real time so how does this add to a performance for instance where um time becomes completely re- relative geography becomes immaterial can that be uh, an aspect so uh, and also again I feel like i'm creating an animation piece is it animation is it live theater um for example in one of the shows we made deliberate mistakes just to keep reminding the audience every time we did that That's nice. I drop the camera once. Shamim would drop a puppet once, just for you know. So they did not edit this, you know. Uh, so, um, the, so what do you do in order to keep that the sanctity of live theater uh, in a digital space? Is is a very key question. On the other hand, uh, what I've seen happen is young people, especially students, in this last year, everything has gone online. So a lot of the um uh, performance classes that one used to teach has gone online and the kind of things students are creating are absolutely inspiring they are really? absolutely incredible so these are young people used to their gadgets you know my phone hangs like every 20 minutes but they do some ram and they it's fine and they use <laughs> it as some some satellite device to uh, receive uh, extraterrestrial mess- messages and god knows what else so they really, you know they really 
be with it. So whether it's one, two phones that they're using and suddenly an iPad and a phone comes in and suddenly you're seeing these uh, holograms and God knows what else, which a lot of these young students are trying, one. And two, and this is my favorite story, when um, Amphan hit West Bengal, uh, you know, the puppetry community was very badly hit. Uh, and a lot of them uh, lost their homes. And what happens typically in a situation like this is uh, traditional puppeteers give up puppet theater and would rather be construction workers or something else which gives them uh, uh, security. So there was a project to collect money to support uh, the, the puppeteers in need. However, they said, we don't want dole. Can you give us performances? Now, how to give performances in a lockdown, in an Amphan hit uh, kind of situation? Uh, one of them came up with a solution. He had a performance. It was their glove puppet performances. He called a guy from the next village who had a smartphone, recorded his performance and WhatsApped it to us. And in a matter of minutes, this performance went viral because very few people have actually seen this kind of traditional puppet theater. Um, and a lot of support poured in. And also what I know is the next time he turns up in Delhi with a live performance or you know anywhere, there will be hundreds of people coming to watch this. Um, so. There is also this possibility of, of looking at something that exists, but very few people know about it and, and connecting it in this way. Um, so yes, it's a world full of possibilities. There are many big questions to answer, many, many big ones. I have, I'm 50% skeptical, but 50% hopeful, so we'll see. I'm going to ask Shreyas a question, Anil, because I know Shreyas will have to uh, sure, sure. call at 7. So I'm going to jump in just on that. No, Shreyas, no, no. If Anilji wants to say something over here, no, I want to hear that. Yes, we'll please. We'll have to jump in. Um, Shreyas, uh, for you, uh, what is when you interact with the, the theatre groups and like you did the BTS, how is it for them to, to have this experience of doing their show for a recording um, as theater artists, how do they feel? What are they feeling about their relationship with an audience that is not in front of them? Yes, so there was this uh, uh, concern that actors had, you know, initially that there's suddenly no audience. So while they were rehearsing, probably there would be five people sitting in front and reacting to certain punches, certain jokes and things like that. But when we're shooting, because, you know, we had to control the sound and everything. So uh, there's, there's no reaction at all. And they didn't know if the punches were working, if the jokes were working. And that happened for a little while, but after that, they got used to the fact that, okay, there's not going to be anyone, but we might as well do it with our conviction. So two, three reactions that we got post that, I said, what do you think about this whole online theater format? And one of the things was, you know, this is, this, this needs to be done for documentation more than anything else. Okay. That let's say it is documentation. Second was uh, someone said that I feel we are updating theater. Okay, because okay, theater traditionally we've been doing it in a particular manner, but now is the time to update it. So we're updating it. One more reaction was, you know, like we have uh, Google Maps, probably Nine Rasa will end up like one of those Google Maps where you want to know something about theater. You visit Nine Rasa and you'll get to know something about theater. I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, just take that forward. What uh, Anurupa Ji just said about the younger generation coming up with some, some whacked out ideas out of their head. <laughs> It's like, uh, you never know what they'll come up with. And there's a whole generation of millennials out there who probably are not aware of what theater is all about. You know, my thing is, why should this magic of theater not reach out to them? Let them at least see what this is. You know, of course, ground shows will keep happening. Offline theater will keep happening. Uh, even though we have your whatever uh, OTT platforms and DVDs and VHS and everything, but cinema theater still remain, right? People still go and watch cinema when they want to see it in a the theater. So my point is that will remain, but at least let us introduce in some manner that what this is all about. Look at this performances, look at this kind of writing and the work that people are, are doing. That's the whole thing. And these youngsters will eventually come up with certain ideas where they will in fact tell us once they watch it, where in fact we've been interacting with certain theater groups and they've already started telling us what we need to do next when we shoot our next sked. Okay, sir, try this, try that, do this. You know, so I am hungry for that. I'm looking forward to that. And I want more of those reactions because that is how we'll keep updating ourselves. That's so awesome. can I just add something to what Shreyas is saying here? And um, also to uh, kind of 
uh, give uh, Rajat a slightly different take on this whole. Uh, so talking about these millennials, you know, there's a lot of research that we've been doing with millennials and, you know, we've come up with a lot of study. So one is that they are looking for uh, quick gratification. They're looking for uh, shorter formats. Uh, they're looking for seeing it when they want to see it. I mean, if you see a cricket match is happening in the stadium, then people are moving to television. Today, a lot of them watch it on their mobile phones. I mean, you'll be amazed at how much content is consumed on the mobile telephone. It is just unbelievable. I mean, uh, Rajat, uh, if if I look at when I was looking at theater or when you were looking at theater, it was a very different world out there. You know, today, these guys, they're so trigger happy looking at content on the mobile phone. You'll not believe it, you know. And having said that, I'm saying maybe this could become an introduction to them for, let's say, theater. They may do it for, for gratification, but suddenly they realize that, hey, man, there's more to this than meets the eye. And somewhere we use that as a communication tool to go out there and tell them, guys, go out and see the play, really. You know, I mean, if you think you enjoyed this on the phone, why don't you go and check it out? So maybe it could become a, a, a communication tool. Maybe it could become that introduction to a completely new audience, to this millennial who are not really, you know, uh, uh, know about it, as Shriyaz was saying, really don't know. I mean, make this, that platform to introduce it to them. Let's take that as a as an initiative and say, let's use this to reach out to many more people. Yeah. That's what educate, I wanted to, to say. Edu educate people. Yes, yes, yes. Educate. It's more like expose <laughs> them to what that is. But it's true, you know, uh, young folks, um, I work in the, you know, the corporate world as well. And I, I always begin a, a session where I ask, has anybody been to the theater? And out of 50 or 100 people, there'll be like five people who put their hands up in their lifetime who may have been to the theater. So there is a vast population that has never even entered the theater. And I, I, you know, I appreciate the idea that's been tossed around being an original cynic on about digital theater um, that uh, people don't know about our world. And this becomes an introduction and um, an exposure of sorts. Um, even when I was watching one of the shows, Shreyas, um, on, on, on the phone, um, I, I was just like, yeah, this is so easy to watch something just boom like that to get to know about this show as well. Um, and I was just watching the dramatic lighting because it was shot on stage. So it was like a theater and shot. And so you're seeing theatrical lighting, which is very different from film lighting or cinema, you know, as we know it. Um, and so they are definitely watching, at least in that shooting of that, uh, that play. This is a theater, you know, theater world. Uh, this but is in, in, in that context, there are no stars. Yeah, sorry, Rajat. It's not, um, it, they've not shot uh, the rooms in different rooms. It's all on that same stage. Space and lighting is changing how we use it dramatically. Um, so people would be exposed to that language for the first time. And in, I'm sure they would find it very fascinating as well. Rajat, come. No, I was going to say the wall behind you is beautiful. Yes. And, and very theatrical. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so great uh and uh absolutely anil as well so just one more thing uh yuki so ott did not kill cinema okay when we when because we sold uh 16 million tickets in a month and 90 percent of that was cinema we were always worried is ott going to kill cinema Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm speaking pre-COVID. Now, what happens after COVID? I don't know. With so much of OTT overdose to people, I'm saying, but it did not kill cinema. Cinema had its place. Cinema had its thing. Tickets sold. There were some kinds of movies that worked better on the OTT than they did on the. And that will happen. Certain yeah. types of films will release only in theaters. Certain types will release only on OTT, and some will release on both. But they will both survive, and they will both succeed, and they will both do very well. And Absolutely. yeah, theater has been around for two and a half thousand years. So there's no likelihood of it dying uh, by any exactly. attack. Exactly. It will not die. It won't. It will Just never the, die. The act of, you know, people coming together to watch something, that will never right. die. They, like in sport as well, they'll watch it on their phones, TVs, as well as they will make the effort to go to the stadiums. So that and just to reassure you all, just to reassure you all that during the three months that things came back alive, okay, every show, whether it was Marathi, Gujarati, though at 50%, they were all going full. If you looked at Prithvi, their occupancy was, I think, 75 or 80%. That's and CPA did not open. But otherwise, all the other theatres, 
we performed as soon as the theater opened in december first week we performed there yeah and it was just beautiful to be back of course <laughs> we did so many marathi we did so many marathi plays in theaters in thane and kalyan and all they all did well and i can tell you it will they'll come back with a vengeance i'll leave you with one more thought every recession you take the 2008 recession after the recession the way things bounced back it was unbelievable and i can i can assure you that we are very very bullish that post this pandemic things will bounce back at the cricket stadium we had 40000 people in the match in ahmedabad okay so i'm just telling you that people will come back and they'll come back with a vengeance so let's let's be positive and i can tell you that things are going to bounce back and they're going to bounce back in a big way and that's my uh, not gut feel it's my 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 real feeling yeah absolutely i think uh, a lot of people will share that uh, feeling i think we we're, we're the first ones to jump to the theaters and fill it up <laughs> <laughs> uh, often for theater audiences the audience is theater people <laughs> as well watching each other show so we'll be there um i'm going to open it up for the audience to ask us questions uh, you can choose uh, to grill us um if you're curious about anything just go ahead now it's a good time to start popping your questions i'm going to be asking our team to send them over to me as well um any question you would want to ask each other like about you know so so uh, anurupa if you had a question because you're you're with uh, book my show right now and you would you know ask a question to book my show uh, what would that be here's a good chance to do it ask difficult one <laughs> uh and shreyas uh, to rajat like i would always just say rajat okay let's visualize <laughs> let's let's get one of the clown shows online how are we going to do it so uh, anurupa or shreyas why one of you you started off no you know actually uh, the irony of the whole situation is online theater is not here to kill offline theater in fact it is here to support uh, offline theater just make sure that we try and reach out to more people make them aware like there are so many youngsters who would you know call me up Please, and tell me that can we can we not call it offline theater can we just call it theater <laughs> चोट लगी दिल को चोट लगी सर थिएटर थिएटर है सर ऑनलाइन बोलो ऑफलाइन बोलो थिएटर थिएटर रहेगा मैं कुछ गोनो टेक दैट अवे बट देयर सो मेनी यंगस्टर्स हु वुड यू नो वुड टेल मी कि या एज किड्स वी वुड यू नो गो विद आवर पेरेंट्स टू वॉच अ पर्टिकुलर प्ले दे वुड टेक अस बट देन लेटर ऑन वी स्टार्टेड ग्रोइंग अप वी गॉट अ लिटिल बिजी विद आवर लाइव्स एंड देन फोन्स केम इन and then the whole equation changed for us so now so i said do, do you think theater has changed or you've changed so they said no obviously we've changed theater still remains the same you know theater is good as ever and will remain the way it is but we've changed we probably don't have time to go and watch a particular play at that particular venue at that time you know it's it's not like a film that you miss a 3 o'clock show and you go you're going for a 4 o'clock one or a 3:30 one you miss the 3 o'clock show and then you don't know when you're going to watch it next you know right. because ncpa mein hoga prithvi mein hoga mai tab kahan rahunga kuch pata nahi so my point like, is like we have been waiting for anurupa's plays in bombay forever he doesn't come to bombay then <laughs> yeah, now is the time the case is going down anurupa we bring you digitally you are a you will see, you will see anurupa's play on the meta series online so you'll be able to catch it soon thank you Good to know. I actually have a, a question slash comment, uh, and I've been wondering about this because now that we are in this uh, very interesting in between space uh, where we are waiting, and a lot of theatre companies I know are rehearsing new work so that as soon as uh, they can, they can uh, present uh, new work on uh, in theatre spaces. But also there is these these growing digital platforms, and I wonder. uh this could be a very interesting moment to in some ways encourage digital work to be created uh and innovate digital work not wait for it to come to you and one of the models that is worked in 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 a small scale is um uh, you know curating stuff which you actually have a platform for where you invite people to create something and commission something and that's something uh, that i know it's happening in the puppet world uh, for example there was the new york puppet slam which was lovely they invited puppeteers from across the world usually it's a new york event and people come in physically they invited people from across the world to create uh, five and 10 minute pieces so which which works brilliantly with young people and uh, they paid for a piece they had a fixed amount of money but such incredible ideas were seen over an evening uh, yeah. and and i wonder if this is 
a good moment for digital platforms to actually go beyond curating existing work because clearly there's not enough existing digital work uh, and instead uh, start to encourage uh, digital work through commissioning and then lots of young artists there a who are hungry for work and b have fantastic ideas i think that's gone towards anil to answer i feel <laughs> we are here to help you from the technology side whatever you need <laughs> we'll we we'll put all our money. efforts will back you <laughs> and i think that yeah. also goes to maybe Shri you can try me for that also <laughs> <laughs> okay Done. I think Shreyas is already uh, set up to to start doing that, and he's got already the theatre makers who've already done shows with him uh, talking back. And I like that it's a two way conversation with you, Shreyas, where they're saying, "Look, this is what you can do more of. Try this, try that." And I think um, I think that's a really good idea where the theatre makers are also feeding back, saying not just saying, "Oh, they give us money and we'll do," but inspiring the platforms or the app makers. Mm -hmm. to say look we can also do this and i think that two way um thought process is good two way you know what in fact the moment i i told people that okay i'm coming up with a platform like this especially maharashtrians okay i got got very excited about it and said acha manje zuni sagri natka bagayla milnar ka so my thing is okay translate you translate that see, translate that one so do do we get to see all the classics uh -huh. uh, on your platform so i said yeah i mean some of them yes we are trying to recreate uh, some of them some of them are already there probably on youtube but some people have shot it before and they are already there on youtube but my thing is look at the new work that people are doing you know whether look at these this whole one act play concept nobody is aware of that and in fact for these millennials who are you know uh, hungry for the shorter formats the 2020 kind of format you know say this is 30 40 minute play one story starts ends in 30 40 minutes but look at that whole format you have some excellent actors performing that new people older people senior actors so why don't you look at all of that so yes my thing is it will take some time for people's perception to change also people have this perception or a bopri theater matlab pata nahi kaise hoga it is only for the intellectuals and things like that it's not like that let them get introduced to the idea of theater is what we are trying to do absolutely sure uh, you know with that whole idea of theater being oh bapre i remember going for an audition for to a it was a film audition and the producer asked me so what's your background and i said you know i studied theater and he said oh theater <laughs> that back <laughs> all right here's a question and again um uh, anyone feel free to answer this one um mrinalika goswami asks is there a change in the behavior of actors performing a play for an audience who can see their work live compared to when they perform in the digital space is there a change in how the actors behave or perform this is an interesting question because we know a lot of actors right i mean i'm probably one of those uh, it will give us an audience <laughs> and and the ham level goes up <laughs> you know for for me i can uh, say for the clown shows you know because so much of it depends on the feedback and the show changes because of the how the audience is going and they're so used to the laughter coming uh, so when we tried to shoot one of the plays it was hello kuch to bolo yaar matlab aapko yahan se nahi raha hai and their energy drops like in, in incredible ways yeah and that's that the cricketers could do it okay they had canned Can cheering in the guys yeah. i know <laughs> i know <laughs> The, the sound guy, the sound guy for IPL is doing a great job. I can tell you that. No, so do you know they actually uh, studied the sound for one and a half months before the course, IPL started, and they've actually recreated. So if you see, sometimes they have certain shouts for certain players, whether it's a Dhoni or it's somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. It's typical of what, and they couldn't use the soundtrack what they recorded from the stadiums. So they've done special recordings. They made it again, you know, and to fit, great. to fit. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, and it's I think next year. change Next change yeah i keep listening to see if it's on loop but it's actually it's quite detailed and 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 maybe that's what we need to do for while we're recording shows as well feed them some nice audience reaction or have a live audience uh, while we're recording we know that that definitely helps yeah that that would help yeah. that would okay yeah but, but there's there's a difference once you perform in front of live audience and uh, online there's definitely a a huge difference you know because a lot of times audience just kind of gives you the kind of energy that you want for a particular uh, show in fact there have been times when 
because the audience was not really getting the situational comedy part of it we had to kind of shift our whole thing to slapstick because mm-hmm. okay now you'll probably understand what we're trying to do so mm. it's it's great fun when you're doing live right and like i said earlier there's yeah. nothing in this world that can replicate the magic of a live performance so yeah. shreya you will do that no? after covid the audience will be sitting there then we'll record you yeah <laughs> so you will have the audience and you can behave exactly like that we you yeah, yeah. won't even know it's being recorded we'll do yeah. it discreetly yeah. <laughs> do the do the puppets behave differently when there is no audience <laughs> <laughs> that's that was a great one <laughs> um uh, trishita asks so uh, would you say that digital theater breaks barriers not just geographically but also in terms of class social political situations accessibility and more it's a kind of a close it's a yes no question but maybe we uh, just yes. we um, yes, yes yes it does yes, it, it does it does yes, and maybe let's it is, let's it is waiting for someone else to answer yes. you know one of our seniors to answer the question no just jump <laughs> jump in no, okay okay rajat has an answer i want to hear rajat's answer on this one <laughs> no i i think we've already spoken about this uh, uh, in the last one hour Uh, Anurupa saying about this uh, puppeteer who was not seen. Now his work has gone viral, uh, and uh, other examples like that. And your friend who wanted to watch Hamilton for two hundred pounds and could not, and then finally he could. So obviously we are breaking barriers to this, no doubt. Um, Shreya, uh, you jump in as well because you have a multilingual platform. I know that already there are about five or six languages, and yeah. you're growing that still some more. Yeah. Yeah no definitely i mean the answer is yes uh, like i said you know anybody from anywhere across the world can access it and see that particular play and not only internationally but even in india for that matter uh, a play like sahibji darling which is playing on our platform probably someone sitting in the remotest village uh, somewhere in maharashtra may not be able to access otherwise but today he can he can see how vishaka subedar and rasika agashe are performing or sandeep patak is cracking his jokes in that particular play Okay, one more question from Afrin Chaudhary. Um, while we know theatre has has a very selective audience, and how people perceive it is very subjective, how do you deal with getting the right audience or the right response? Um, and I'm going to add to that: How do you, you know, like all of us theatre makers, it's like we know our audiences. They come for Anurupa's work. They'll come for Rajat's work. They would, uh, if they like Rajat's work, they may not. They might. They have preferences of genres of theatre as well, right? Um, so, how do you also find your audience in this digital space, as well as, um, yeah, this whole, uh, you know, tweaking live to your audience, responding to your audience? What about that? very interestingly we have found new audiences in the last year so this is a lot these are people who i i mean there is a percentage which which used to come to shows regularly but a lot of these people were not uh, uh watches of puppet theater for example mm-hmm. um so that's quite interesting including children but very interesting the adults and i'm always uh excited to see adults in the audience because our work is puppet theater maybe 70% for adults and 30% for children so that's definitely a, a change that there is a lot of new audiences watching absolutely and imagine if you're teaching students in poema and um, and you say okay you know we're going to show you a clown version of the shakespeare play um and you can see how i keep drawing <laughs> rajat's work <laughs> online um and then they get to experience that as well uh this would be uh fantastic wouldn't it no, and so in a way it's great and we'll Sorry. double it and we'll double it with the live show again and and when we can that's the dream right to be able to do all of it not less of it but all of it um i'm going to <laughs> anil give you uh, 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 uh you take over for a bit and then sanjoy is going to jump in to join us for the conversation for the last 15 minutes as well and no, so i just wanted to say here that um, i'm glad that purists will stay purists so that audience will never change for us and we'll get and have to the digital platform we'll have to shreyas and us will have to reach out to different people because rajat will not watch it digitally so i have to find new people so it helps me to go out there and find new people and indirectly it will benefit you rajat that you'll get that many more people watching you thank you thank you Thank you very much for all the great work you're doing, Mr. Makija and Shreyas. <laughs> you promote it, and not really. I mean it because 
it any <laughs> you know what sanjana did at at prithvi with the summer workshops it was yeah. incredible and it was exactly she would spend those two months talking to kids about theater so because she was certain that this is the future audience for theater you know yes they come in for a workshop and and then they become the audience and it's a it's a, it's a slow process and everything helps for sure hmm. Sanjo, I let's have you uh, join us. Get your camera on so we can see you. Great, jump in. Thanks, Yuki. I mean, um, just to sort of say to begin with, thank you all for being part of this amazing conversation. And just to say, you know, we've been. If it hadn't been for this lockdown and if it hadn't been for the pandemic, we would never have explored the possibility. of airing the work that we've shot at meta over so many years and every time i view a play every saturday uh, whether it's nona with 35 people on stage or uh, mahabharat as we did uh, elephant in the room as we did yuki uh, last saturday it amazes me as to how much this medium allows you to get far more into the play with every nuance with every expression with lighting changes with production values and uh, and the empathy i mean friend story was a whole new viewing when i saw it here as opposed to when i saw it uh, on uh, you know at the shakespeare and globe in uh, or at meta uh, in in india so i think that as anil said and as shreyas has said i think there's a huge opportunity here to reach out create new audiences this last saturday in the in the midst of this incredible tragedy that's unfolding around us we were debating what to do and i said no just go ahead because life goes on and we can't stop it and and our marketing colleagues sort of said nobody will come and we had record numbers of people viewing the play so i do believe that there is an opportunity here as you've said yuki and anurupa said to expand our audiences Yes, it's not the same thing. Theater is finally about the exchange of energy between the actor and the audience, and it is this bond. It is a covenant that you cannot, in any way, mortgage. But what you can do is, if you shoot it live with an audience, perhaps not necessarily, as Rajat said, only as a film, but as a theatrical production, uh, perhaps it's something that you can do. And again, just to wrap, just to wrap up, I I do think what Shreyas has done is enormously brave. Shreyas, and most strength to you. Uh, this is something that we've been asking everybody from the national broadcaster to uh, other uh, OTT platforms, etc. Z, of course, started a theater series on their Z theater. But what you've done is really brought addressed uh, this need for dance, for all the performing arts, to be on one. and i do hope you and bms and all of us collectively create more such opportunities the more platforms there are the richer the content the richer the content the more possibilities and potentials for artists actors and dancers and choreographers and lighters to be able to find work and as we know you have to be atman nirbhar today there's no point looking to somebody else nobody's out there to support us so let's get our act together and shreyas i think you've been able to make that happen and just to everybody to listen you know we were debating as to whether we should continue this series and i was very clear that we had to primarily because this is something that helps performers theater groups and more uh, by doing this series uh, thanks to mahindra and meta we were able to provide some honorarium some opportunity a little bit of money uh, and some snacks as you key so for every production that we are able to air that goes a long way in today's day and time yes it may not be solving the problem out there but what is it doing it's holding a mirror to reality and that's what theater does and good theater irrespective whether it's 40 years old or 40 years ahead is still incredibly poignant and incredibly empathetic and allows you to understand how contemporary and evergreen that theme is much of the plays that you all been in are those kind of productions 
irrespective of the time that it's done in. So thank you all and thank you to the audience for watching. I do hope you all will continue to come back on over the next five weeks, uh, irrespective of this uh, disaster that's around us, because it is time to tell the truth. It is time to hold that mirror to society. It is time to call out all that we see around us. It is also time to show that there isn't one truth. What does theater do? It allows you to see truths from many different points of view. And then one truth is not more true than the other. Everything can stand together. It allows you to celebrate diversity. It allows you to celebrate the syncretic traditions that we have known in India. And it allows you to also provide opportunities for minorities, for differently abled, and all of those communities that look to us to be able to find a way to be able to raise their voice. At Salam Balak Trust, an organization with street kids, I remember at the end of one of our annual plays, one of the kids came and said to me, Bhaiya, pehle baar mujhe laga ki mere awaaz koi sun raha hai. Mujhe koi lecture nahi mil raha hai. Mere awaaz kisi ne suna. Thank you. I feel whole. I feel complete. That is the power of theater. So thank you all. Back to you, Yuki, and then hand it over to Suraj. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Thank you for supporting Meta. Thank you, Sanjoy, and thank you, Meta. Uh, as always, joining us at these very critical points and giving us that nice little push uh, every time. This is a critical point in, I think, um, how uh, we're evolving as artists, theater, the genres, all of it. Um, and uh, it will be interesting to see where we go and then meet again, if we could, all of us again, maybe four years down and then just see where we come with the work that we're all making. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Anurupa, sharing these beautiful anecdotes as well as, you know, talking to us about um, the larger communities that you have been a part of as an artist and as an educator. Uh, Shreyas, for, of course, that's this incredible platform that you have been really brave and courageous to take on and make. And of course, you have a huge team that's working with you on it. And you are also, you know, I, I wish you a lot of luck and success on it because I know if you're successful, we have more audiences coming to see our shows as well. And our theater group will be getting in touch with you as well to try and get our shows on with you. So thank you, Shreyas. Uh, Raja, thank you so much uh, for being the, the, the grump uh, uh, on the show <laughs> because you echo <laughs> part of me, which is also very grumpy, which is like, ah, I can't do, can't do. So um, thank you. And um, I think we're going to be meeting to uh, talk about how we, we make theater uh, even for screen, because you're more equipped. In fact, you're somebody who's so equipped with the, the screen technology. Um, that's why I was looking to you. I was like, how would you do it? Because you already are the man behind the camera, etc. So thank you for being there with us. And Anil, thank you so much for being uh, a supporter of the act of theater making of audiences, uh, connecting performers to audiences and really encouraging us to think about um, how it complements what we already do on stage, that this is uh, a bigger part uh, of the whole. Um, and uh, really thank you for your contribution to the conversation uh, with that lens. Uh, thank you, uh, Suraj. Thank you to the entire Meta team. This is the end of a fantastic day of panel discussions. And thank you to our audience for coming and being part of this and asking us a lot of questions and being with us to the end of this day. Uh, take Yuki, care, you, wherever you are. You did such a good job, Yuki. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it was your first time you said, I don't know. I, you I, I doubt that. Truth. I really doubt that. This was uh, your first time. You okay, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I did ask some friends. I was like, what questions can I ask? Okay. Uh, Ramu Ramnathan is one of them and he's listening in. So thank you, Ramu, for also helping me out to prepare as well, as well as other friends. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be part of the theatre community this evening to remind me that we have days to work towards. And pleasure seeing you, Anurupa, Shreyas, Mr. Makija, Yuki. So See you thank you all. It was a very, very nice session. It was an enjoyable two hours. Thanks all. Thank you so much. Suraj. Thank you, we'll see you off screen also. Offline, we'll see you next. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Anil, Anurupa, Rajat, and Shreyas for such an incredible session. Agreements, disagreements, opinion differences, but fantastic to have you all this, all, uh, all of you in this conversation. And UK, absolutely, as everybody said, fantastic. And I remember the first time I, you know, called so uh, UK, I was like, you know, UK, I want you to moderate the session. She was like, I haven't done this before. How will I do it? Do it, but. Absolutely fantastic. You thank, thank you so much for doing this and thank you so much. Thank you. thank you everyone for supporting and being there for theater. Once again, we'd like to uh, thank Mahindra's for their unstated support for arts and thank you all for watching and being a great audience. If you like this meta dialogue, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications of our upcoming events. All these meta dialogues will be available to view on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. As COVID-19 continues, to take unprecedented, uh, unprecedented human toll, societies are in a turmoil and the creative industry is in a free fall. We need a decisive multilateral effort to support them. When the news is all doom and gloom, as it has been since the outbreak of the coronavirus, it's hard for even the most optimistic among us to stay positive. In an effort to spread optimism and keep your theater lovers engaged and entertained, we are extremely delighted to announce the extension of Meta for another five weeks, where we will bring you another set of five excellent play Meta plays and the conversations and backstories based on them every Friday and Saturday at the comfort of your homes. Thank you once again and see you soon. Till then, stay home, stay masked and stay safe. Together, we will get through this. Thank you. Thank you.